Welcome to High School Football Game Night, presented by the Scenic Sports Network. Now, here's tonight's game. Welcome to High School Football Game Night on the Scenic Sports Network. Tonight, 7th-ranked Providence Eagles take on the Raiders from Houston Academy. Mike Bridges along with Corey Triggers here to bring you tonight's game. We have the opening kickoff of the game. Looks like it goes into the end zone. Providence going to bring it out, sporting an 8-1 record. Uh, it has not been a season to remember at Houston Academy. 1-7, they've lost 7 straight. And when you look at this series, if you're new to Providence football, you see that Providence leads the series six games to five. This is the, the uh, 12th time they've played, but they've won the last four, so Houston Academy uh, much better early on in this rivalry. Yeah, certainly Providence, uh, our football program certainly been growing since we started it and doing a lot better, uh, obviously, in the last several years. You know, that you mentioned four straight. That's been by an average of 27 points per game over those four straight, too. Providence coming out in the bunch set that they uh, run quite a bit. It's going to be a pitch outside to Grant Weatherford. He gets the first down out to about the 37-yard line. A little bit of a different play than we normally see him opening up with. Yeah, definitely a little different. I haven't seen Grant get the ball on the first play of the game, as that I can recall so far this year. And you know, it's interesting to see there. We played uh, a couple of weeks ago when we played Pike County. We really couldn't get to the edges because of Pike County's defense uh, uh, speed. Here we get to the edge pretty nicely against H.A. on the first play. So that'll bring up second down and three. I mistakenly said he got a first down. It is second down and three. Collins McClintock as the quarterback. Gus Goldsboro is in the, uh, just to the outside flat. He did not catch the ball there. And uh, it's gonna bring up a third down and three. Yeah, that pass behind Goldsboro. Nice effort by Goldsboro to make the play there, but just a little off target. And uh, Collins was under pressure pretty quick uh, by that defensive front from HA. One thing that you've probably noticed with Providence is Wise Gordon has been out a number of games now with a torn A. CL, not scoring as many points and not having as many long sustained drives as they have in the past. That's right, Mike. We'll see if we miss the big third down right here to keep this one going. So the give is inside to Goldsboro. He picks his way through. It's going to be really close. Looks like they're going to give him the first down. So the uh, first crucial play of the game goes Providence's way. And uh, Gus Goldsboro with about four yards there for the first down. Yeah, nice push by the right side of our offensive line there to get the yardage needed to get the chains moving here. We really didn't need to go three and out to start the game, that's for sure. Absolutely, especially when you're playing a rival. And one of the things that the Dothan Eagle uh, made reference to, it's the only rivalry now in Dothan with Northview and Dothan High merging into one. So it's another inside handoff to, uh, I think that's Grant Weatherford, give him another big uh, gain there. Uh, it's going to be about eight yards, and uh, Providence seeing something there on the inside, uh, able to uh, get Grant the ball. Yeah, nice job by Weatherford cutting it up, using his speed uh, to get some positive yardage there. Number 61, Jacob Beaver, really good defensive lineman for HA. One of their leading tacklers uh, was in on that stop, along with a couple of other Raiders. It is senior night here for Providence, 13 seniors playing their final regular season home game. They did make the playoffs, so they will play a playoff home game in two weeks. A different set. Collins keeps the ball. He gets uh, sort of bottled up, and I think they're going to give him no gain on that one. And uh, Collins looking for a, a big night tonight. If he can get four yards, he can join the 2,000-yard club. Yeah, yeah. That uh, He just needed four, I think you said. Is that right? Across yes, right. that? So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Hopefully we'll get that on the next play here. A uh, nice play there by 67, K. Wig Wiggum for H.A., a big guy uh, on the uh, interior line for the Raiders. So here we go once again third down for Providence on the opening drive. Scoreboard uh, has changed now to two so it's third and two bunch set. McClintock takes the uh, handoff and then it's another inside handoff to Grant Weatherford. This has a chance to go the distance. Weatherford's got one man to beat. He gets right past him, keeps his balance and he walks into the end zone for the touchdown. Six one yards and earlier we were talking before we came on the air they haven't had much big playability that's the first time we've seen that in quite a while wow what a play nice uh, you know little misdirection there gave it to um, young blood uh, I'm sorry uh, get, uh Gave it on the double handoff there, um, and then uh, Weatherford gets the corner, and he takes off. He's got great speed, obviously. He's got the big play potential, but to get him there on the corner, what a nice run there and a nice start to the game for Providence. And that's a play that Providence has had in their back pocket, haven't used it very much this year, but it worked to perfection there. Collins McClintock handing it to uh, Gus Goldsboro, who then hands it to Grant Weatherford. He goes 61 yards for the touchdown. John Teeter's point after is good, and Providence takes the opening drive 
75 yards down the field for an opening score to take a 7-0 lead. Sure. Yeah, we're expecting to see uh, Providence win this game, no question, that, but you never know. And it's great to see an opening drive there, making that statement earlier. You don't want H.A. to build confidence early on in the game, and that right there is something that you want to see as a coach taking control early. Good drive on the first uh, well, the it's first, something uh, we haven't seen. Possession. Yeah, it's something we haven't seen the last few weeks from uh, Providence, and really go back to that Pike County game when they took the opening drive down, got a field goal, took the second drive down, couldn't make the fourth down, and the offense has been a little iffy ever since then and so this is a good sign when H.A. gets the ball they have some potential to pass the ball uh, running the ball has not been quite as good they've got two or three running backs that are pretty good but none of them have more than 300 yards rushing yeah, and A.J. Uh, as many uh, uh, teams at this point in the season are doing are battling a lot of injuries they've got even the guys they've had carrying the ball earlier in the year I think they have some out of the game and some who are still banged up so uh, definitely something they're gonna have to try to overcome tonight with the injuries John Dieter teeing it up to kick off, and he's going to go a line drive, going to let the ball go, and H.A. is going to take the ball at the 25-yard line to, for their opening drive. Yeah, Jeter's got a really good leg, he, uh, even on the, the point after there. You can see that. We've seen it throughout the year. But his confidence as a kicker is building. And, you know, as we get a little closer to the playoff time, you want your kicker to have that confidence going forward there because it may come down to that, obviously, to win or lose a game. Absolutely. Two weeks ago, he had the game winner, 41-yarder against Op. Last week, he missed a couple. It was a little bit of a windy night and uh, was not able to hit on those, but he's got the leg to make it. So A.J. is going to open up, throwing the ball. It's intercepted by Jackson Colley. First play of the game, Sheldon Ott intercepted by Jackson Colley, takes it down to about the 12-yard line, and this is a dream start for Providence. What a great play there uh, by Colley, picking that off. It looked like there may have been some miscommunication there between uh, Ott and the receiver. I didn't see the receiver even turning around looking toward the football, but obviously Jackson Ott was looking right where he needed to be, so great play there. Uh, uh, by Jackson Colley. Jackson Colley brought it back down to the 14-yard line. Sometimes from our vantage point, you can't quite see where they go out of bounds. But uh, Providence second possession following the turnover. Collins McClintock inside to Gus Goldsboro. He's going to bounce it outside, see what he can get. He's able to get about three yards, but there is a flag on the play. Yeah, it looks, uh, looks like that's where uh, usually holding is called from the back judge there. Uh, looks like A.J.'s got a player down. Can't pick out the number, maybe number six. Uh, that would be Banks Nichols maybe. You know, you see Goldsboro taking that around left end, and the defender for H.A. came in to um, make the tackle, and Goldsboro really initiated that contact. Um, good hard running by number 23, but you hope the H.A. defender is okay here. Well, absolutely, and it's a violent sport, and what you want your running back to do is take on that. Uh, tackler and then not let him hit you and sometimes this is what happens we don't want to speculate on what's going on it's uh, 77 degrees and it is a human night so uh, cramping could play a part in it as well looks like it might be a leg injury let's hope that he is okay while we were watching that uh, Providence was called for holding something that has been a little bit of a problem for Providence throughout the season and especially the last few weeks it certainly has. That's something I know they work on and practice every week, obviously trying to clean that up a little bit. But when you run the ball as many times as we do, you're going to be more prone to have a holding uh, call on you. Yeah, the only thing that's frustrating is sometimes the holding's called a long way away from where the play is, and that can be frustrating. Well, Providence now coming out with a uh, four-wide receiver set here, and uh, we'll see what they can do. We don't see this very often from them. It is first and 20, and it's going to be a quick out pass. There's plenty in front front for Hayes Lewis. He's got all of the yardage back and gets close to a uh, to the goal line given to about three yards uh, to the three yard line or so but he did get all of that plus a few. Yeah really nice play. That, you know I tell you one thing that maybe can be overlooked in a play like that. Collins put that ball on the money and when you're throwing a screen pass like that if you get it on the money that receiver can take off a lot quicker if he has to make it than if he has to make an adjustment. So Hayes catches that hits the seam quickly and again Hayes Lewis initiated the contact on that hit at the into that play. Really good job by Hayes there, number 17. We're seeing some big hitting. It's a rivalry game. That's what happens. All of these guys know each other. The school's just a few miles apart, and a lot of these kids growing up 
going to church and other activities together, so they're very familiar with each other. Gus Goldsboro right up the middle, goes over the top, give him the touchdown from three yards out, and uh, in about six minutes of action, Providence has scored twice to go up 13-0. Yeah, give our offensive line some credit there. Matthew Morris, 58, Harris Holland, uh, several others I'm missing out on, obviously, but that was easy. Uh, that They made that look very easy for Gus. And that's where uh, Providence is going to make a lot of their bread and butter right up the middle. They know how to block that one really well. And uh, if you look at it from both sides of the coin here, Providence is the perfect start for them. For H.A., it's a start you didn't want. Cheater in for the extra point. It's up, looks like it's good, and Providence with a 14-0 lead, six minutes into the game, and uh, things really clicking right now for Providence, and uh, they already have uh, over 100 yards on their first two possessions, and uh, this is exactly what the offense needed. No question. Uh, you know, that's uh, Kenny Keith couldn't have drafted this any better uh, in, in the uh, in the pregame speech here of how this is going. Did just going everything is going Providence's way right now. You've got to keep the momentum going though. You don't want to let your foot off the gas at a time like this. I mean, we're only three minutes into this football game. There's a whole lot left. Absolutely. So don't miss the running event of the year. It's the Red Nose Run Holiday Half Marathon and 5K. It's sponsored by Flowers Hospital. The annual fundraiser benefits the Southeast Alabama Community Foundation. It's provided almost $300,000 over the years for local charities. Don't miss out on the holiday must. There's food, music, medals, t-shirts, and of course there's a great run if you're a runner. So if you want to register for the Red Nose Run, uh, it's rednoserun.itsyourrace.com. So rednoserun.itsyourrace.com. Race.com. Jeter with the kickoff. It's another line drive, and AJ's going to pick it up this time. Look like they'll get good field position. Squirts out up to the 45 yard line, and uh, just a, another couple of moves, and that might have been disastrous for Providence. Yeah, that was uh, one of the receivers, a really good athlete, Max Bergerine, number 23 for AJ, who picked that up, fielded it cleanly, and got it up the field in a hurry. That's what you want to do when there's a kick like that. It's a high risk, though, because if he tries to field, it could bounce off of him or anything could happen. But uh, give him some props there that he was able to get it up and bring it up to the 45. So H.A. comes out with their second possession. The first possession was an interception on Ott's part. Uh, and it looks like that we're going to have too many men on the field for H.A. So their second play, it is going to be a uh, penalty. 12 men in the huddle. And I'll be honest with you, Corey. I see that a lot, week in and week out. This is the first time that I've ever seen it called. Uh, they're wait yeah, they are waving it off. Apparently, HA got a timeout before the flag was dropped. So, uh, you know, some, something you don't want to have to waste a timeout on, but obviously you don't want to lose five yards either. Right, That's especially with good field position. With the timeout on the field, the score is Providence 14, HA nothing, and we're going to take a break with them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, back here at the Eagle's Nest, and uh, it's a running play for H.A. and does pretty well. Gets about eight yards, and uh, H.A.'s second play, uh, they get some positive yardage. Yeah, Jackson Colley on the stop uh, for Providence there, number nine. Senior playing his uh, last regular season home game tonight, getting in on the action. I say that was Jackson Colley. I believe actually that may have been um, number eight, Abe Chancellor on the tackle there. I apologize. And that was Austin Carpenter on the uh, on the run there for H.A. And so it brings down second down and three. Sheldon Ott's the quarterback. He's going to pass it once again. Gets it out a little bit behind the receiver, but he had a heavy rush in his face. He certainly did. That was Grant Youngblood, uh, again, a senior, putting pressure on Ott there. It was right in his face, and Ott took a lick, uh, stood in there, made the throw, but obviously incomplete. So third down here, big play coming up uh, for the Raiders. Our defense needs to stand up for us here. And Ott's got some good size, six foot three, uh, goes about 190, 200 pounds, left-handed quarterback, over 800 yards passing so far this season, and uh, so he can pass the ball. And HA likes to get a balance of pass and run. Third down and three, and it looks like it's going to be the double run again. But it looks like we have another stoppage in play. Yeah, it looked like the Eagles were offsides on that play, unless they were drawn. 
Now they're going to call it offsides on Providence. So what was a third down of three becomes a uh, automatic first down. And at Houston Academy with a little bit of life here, uh, driving the ball now down to the Providence 42-yard line. Yeah, one of those mental errors as a defensive coach you hate to see. And, you know, obviously a good job there by I Give him credit with the snap count. Drew us off um, with a strong snap count. And they got a first down the easy way. A.J. was about to run the same play Providence ran for 61 yards there. Ott in the back in the uh, backfield. We got a player in motion. He's going to get the ball. He's going to be thrown for a loss about five yards into the backfield. And uh, that was number 20 for H.A. on the run. Yeah, number 86, Jackson Heron with tremendous tr penetration there. What a great play by the senior in the backfield. And that was Brock Mitchell on the run. Uh, he's had a pretty good season catching the ball, uh, but running it there, he, would, he uh, lost just a few yards. Yeah, H.A. trying to go to the speed sweep there, but when you don't get it on the edge, with that kind of penetration, uh, that play's just not going to work like that. So good job there by our defense. And so far, H.A. Uh, running their fifth play here. We've seen good penetration by Providence on each of the plays. Second down at 14, seven and a half minutes to go. There's the motion once again. It's a handoff to the other side with Carpenter. Looks like that also lost yardage. Looks like he lost one yard there. Yeah, several Providence players on the stop there, including number 40, Michael Sullivan, one of our leading tacklers. It's gonna bring up third and long for, for H.A. here. So it's going to be third down at 14. They, it looks like they gave him no gain on that play. So Houston Academy getting a first down on a penalty uh, on the last set of downs. Now facing a third down and 14. Looks like it'll be a, a passing situation. You have two wide receivers on the right. Ott's going to go back. He's looking that way. Has some pressure going back to the left. And it is caught. And uh, the runner was thrown but uh, was not tackled, and it uh, looks like they're going to probably give him forward progress about four yards, which will bring up an interesting scenario here for Houston Academy. Yeah, on this side of the 50, you know, what do you do here? Uh, you're going to punt and probably gain a few yards from it, but um, it's fourth and long. I, I, I think you still have to punt this right here under this scenario. That Give credit to our defense there. Uh, Ott had to get rid of that ball really quickly, um, and he, although he's able to complete the pass, our defense was right there to make the play. Good job, Abe Chancellor and some other uh, Eagles on the, on the yeah, top. Yeah, that's probably a situation where the, the wide receiver wanted to make a play, but by getting thrown back and coming back up, he ended up losing about six yards. So H.A. is going to punt. Clock going under six minutes. He punts it. It's a line drive. Bounces, and Weatherford is just going to let it go into the end zone. That got a little nerve right yeah, here. Did. Just a little I, bit. I was afraid he had a hand on that. The referee was right there though, to make the call, and uh, so Weatherford scared the coaches up here a little bit. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, we almost had to go to a rules expert and say, if you touch the ball at the one and then it goes in the end zone, what are we going to do with that? I don't know where we would have found that expert. Maybe the guy <laughs> next to us. We'll, we're glad to have in the booth with us David Mundy. He's uh, with the Dothan Eagle, of course. And David gave us a great article today on the H.A. Providence rivalry. Good information in there. Uh, we really appreciate David covering not only H.A. Uh, and Providence, but the Wiregrass in general for our high school sports, which we all love so much. Providence with their third drive of the game and inside handoff once again to uh, Gus Goldsboro gets him about seven yards there and uh, Goldsboro now with 14 yards but more importantly has gone over the 500 yard mark for the season and uh, I don't know what his goals were for the season but I don't think he probably thought he was going to get 500 yards and uh, once the wise went down he's able to uh, pick up some of that slack. You know well, looking at the run there that real patient kind of reminded me of wise how he Worked through his way through the hole there, uh, tiptoeing, prancing a little bit, and a nice gain there. Good run by Gus. Feeling more comfortable every week, obviously. There's some motion. Once again, Goldsboro's going to get it right up the middle. He cuts out to the outside. It's going to be a foot race to the end zone. Goldsboro down to the 20. One man to beat. He beats him. 73 yards for the touchdown. We talked about the big playability being gone the last few weeks. It's back tonight. Certainly. What a great run there. Nice job again by the O-line. Opened up. I see 58 coming off the field there. Matthew Morris again. Colby Pilcher. Uh, Ian Smith. Several of the big guys there opened up for Gus. He turns the burners on and uh, outruns the HA defense all the way for the touchdown. Nice job. So he played seven minutes of action. Providence has had the ball three times and has scored all three times. Once on a 73-yard run, once on a 61-yard run, and then once following a turnover. Jeter in for the extra point attempt. It's down. 
It's up. It looks good. And Providence, in seven minutes of action, has scored three touchdowns in a rivalry game. You know it's got to feel good for the guys. Certainly. I mean, again, couldn't draw it up any better than it is so far for the, so far for the Eagles. You know, you, A.J., where do you go from here? Uh, I, I know those coaches are over there doing the best they can to keep them in the game and keep them motivated. But what a great start for Providence here on senior night. Well, in uh, Houston Academy last year made the playoffs, lost, lost in the first round, so it's not like they haven't had success. Two years ago, they've struggled, so two of the last three years have been a struggle for them. And just through the first couple of drives, you see a quarterback that's got good size, but you look at the running back and the wide receivers lacking a little bit of size there. And uh, it's just a program that after this year needs to uh, regroup a little bit. And... Uh, come back but again it's 21 nothing just seven minutes into the game so it's a long game it is it's, it's we've got a ways to go here um and you know ha they do have 16 seniors on this roster which is a, a very heavy senior class at a school the size of ha and providence so seeing a lot of excitement from the providence crowd the providence players the last few weeks have been really tight games for providence so it's been a while since we've seen them this loose on the sidelines jeter to kick off once again and he does just a little squib kick that he does. It was touched by H.A. They were able to fall on it. That could be just a little bit scary there, but H.A. will start at the 37-yard line, third time they've had the ball. Yeah, that's 24, Chapman Andrews for H.A., who's a wide receiver, good hands, and a good effort there to cover that up for the Raiders. That could have been a disaster. So H.A. coming out with a third time having the ball and uh, with the same backfield with Sheldon Ott at quarterback. From the shotgun, it's going to be a quick handoff and uh, getting just about two yards there, a good shoestring tackle by Providence. Yeah, 51 Grant Youngblood there did, as you said. Just got a hand in. That's all it took to bring uh, the H.A. runner down. So good start on first down for our defense. I will say from up here in the booth, it's just a little difficult to uh, see the HA numbers. They're wearing uh, white uniforms with a silver or gray numbers, and they don't have numbers on the side. So it's just a little bit difficult. So if it takes us a minute, uh, just understand that uh, we're doing the best we can here. Second down and eight. Jake Ogletree with the uh, carry once again, give him uh, probably just right back to the line of scrimmage, maybe one yard, setting up a third and long. Yeah, I see uh, Michael Sullivan again on the tackle there, along with number 77, Jackson Dykes, uh, playing some defense right now for us. So facing their third, third down, uh, Houston Academy able to overcome one first down with a penalty, was not able to overcome the second third down that they have, and let's see what they can do here, third down and seven. Looked like that we have uh, Brock Mitchell in the background with them. It's a heavy rush on Sheldon Ott. He's not able to get out. Providence able to sack him, give him about a seven or eight yard loss there, and Houston Academy once again going to have to punt. Yeah, Grant Youngblood, his speed off the edge is really impressive. He, he flushed uh, or pushed um, Ott up in the pocket there, and it looked like Cole Smith, number seven, the other defensive end for the Eagles, finished him off. So here we go, fourth down, H.A. forced to punt again. And at this level, a six foot, 390 pound quarterback is not easy to, uh, to bring down. So the punter needs to come out for Houston Academy. He was warming up on the side, so he should be ready to go. There's under 10 seconds to go on the play clock. He's able to get it off. We'll see what the punt, it's a low line drive and Weatherford is gonna let it bounce a couple of times and uh, it's gonna, be down at about the 28-yard line. Looked like there was an opportunity there for him, but he chose not to try to get it off the bounce. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't feel that one. Um, that, that was some room to run if he would have filled to that. That's uh, number 42, Judson Lizenby, uh, the punter for HA. Uh, but uh, I'm surprised Grant didn't pick that one up and take advantage of that running room he had. So here comes Providence, fourth time with the ball. They uh, received the opening kickoff, went right down on a 71-yard or 61-yard run, got a turnover, scored again on their second time, then had a 73-yard run just a couple of minutes ago. And it looks like that uh, Providence not sure who needs to be in the game, uh, but they got plenty of time on the play clock to be able to get this play off. 
the same lineup that we've seen. Collins McClintock in the shotgun. He's going to pass it. He's looking right. He's flushed a little bit. Still looking right. Throws it back to the middle of the field. Hayes Lewis is open. Knocks one guy away and gets right close to the first down. One of the first things they tell you is do not throw it across your body back in the middle of the field, but that worked out. It certainly did for number 14, Collins. I tell you, he did a great job of avoiding the rush there. Rolled all the way to the right side of the field. Throws back to Hayes Lewis in the middle, as you said. Nice catch by Hayes and positive play. So it's a first down, uh, give them 11 yards on the play. So Collins McClintock has two completions in the first quarter, both to Hayes Lewis for 36 yards. Still looking for Collins to get his four yards so he can join the 2,000 yard club. Clock under two and a half minutes to go. Providence leading 21 to nothing. McClintock gives it inside to Goldsboro. He's going to jump outside to the right side. Got a big hole, makes a couple of guys miss, and gets over into H.A. territory at the 49-yard line. Give him 17 yards on that run. Very nice. Again, our offensive line getting uh, getting on their blocks, holding those blocks long enough for Gus to get to the second and third level, and he's making things happen when he gets in that open space. Gus already over 100 yards on the night, 104. A 73-yard run always helps that average. Just a little bit coming in, he was going to go over 500 yards at this point he may get 700 yards by the end of the night first and 10 at the 49 yard line clock under two minutes to go Collins gonna throw once again it's gonna go up top good pass just out of the hands but I don't think that would have even been inbounds uh, if Abe had caught that yeah Abe Chancellor number eight the intended receiver there and I agree with you Collins put a little too much on that. Obviously, when things are going really well and the uh, the adrenaline's flowing, sometimes you put a little too much on that on the on the throws, and that one got away from him a little bit there. It was worth a try. One thirty-eight to go. Second down and ten for Providence, leading twenty-one to nothing. And it's been quite a while this season since they scored twenty-one points in the first quarter. And uh, this is exactly what the doctor ordered for Providence heading into the playoffs. Give inside to Goldsboro. He's going to bounce out to the right side. Pretty good yardage there. Give him just about six yards on the play, uh, setting up a third down and four. Yeah, and again, nice positive yardage there. It's obvious Providence coach is realizing we can go to the run pretty much any time, it looks like now. So I guess I'm trying to throw it a little earlier to do something a little different, mix it up a little. But Gus gaining a positive yardage there on second down. Got the referees conferring about something. As we always say, anytime the officials get together, nothing good comes of that. They seem to be discussing. Okay, so I think we're going to uh, have every official weigh in here. Looks like we have a dead ball on sportsman like conduct on. Uh, Providence, so that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. So what you would have had a third down in uh, four or five, now you got third and long. Yeah, I, I uh, didn't see that when I'm not saying it didn't happen. It just uh, wasn't on my radar uh, there at the end of that play. I guess some a little extracurricular activity, as they say. Well, it looks like it was called on Gus Goldsboro. He's on the sideline now and uh, being talked to, very animated by the coaches. So we have Christian Durden in the back backfield freshman so Collins going to go up top once again going to go deep down the sidelines but the ball uh, out of bounds I'm not sure if it was uh, caught by H.A. but it was out of bounds so it's going to bring up a fourth down and 17. Well H.A. Uh, very fortunate uh, to get that penalty there to help him with that uh, that stop here on third down. No, it's, uh, still, no it's third. that brings up third is that right? No it brings up fourth down it should be because it was a dead ball foul. Oh, so, it was after the play. Okay. So okay. it's 4th uh, and 17, and uh, the officials once again standing over the ball and uh, talking. So now we have a hold on uh, Providence. That's going to be declined, obviously, and so uh, Providence is going to have to punt the ball. So uh, Gus Goldsboro had a big run. But something must have been said at the end there, and uh, it was called by the official or heard by the official, and uh, so that thwarted that drive for Providence. So they'll have to punt with 1:15 to go. Yeah, Jake Smith, number 12, punter for Providence, has done a good job this year. A 
it's a low liner. It takes a big hop up, and uh, that's exactly what you want to happen if you're the Providence because it's a little bit harder to um, field. It, you would think HA got on top of it. I think they did. Yeah, I think the uh, HA player fielded and fell forward there, maybe for a yard after he got his hands on it is all. So time for our defense to step up, keep this uh, a shutout for right now. For fans, they think when the ball jumps up, it's easy just to grab it and run. But sometimes you grab it and you want to look to see that you're going to get hit and uh, you can lose sight of the ball. So we see Ott under center for the first time in the I formation. Two tight end set. It's going to be a sweep. Some decent yardage there for H.A. Give them just about four yards on that play as the clock goes under one minute to play. Yeah, Jake Smith, Grayson Stewart uh, on the stop there for our defense. Yeah, definitely a positive play for H.A. on first down. Um, if you're a Raider, that's certainly what you want to see as we're getting close to the end of the first quarter. Yeah, that was Brock Mitchell on that carry. So H.A. Uh, does need to snap the ball before the end of the first quarter here. Looking at a second down and six. And for the second time, we're going to see Ott under center in the uh, straight eye formation. It's a straight handoff draw. It gets just about three yards, and as we start the second quarter, it's going to bring up a third down and two. Yeah, that's number 30, Ogletree on the carry for H.A., and a really nice shoestring stop there by number nine, Jackson Colley for the Eagles, going to bring up third and, what's that, third and two, third and three? Third and two as we start the uh, second quarter. That's the end of the first quarter with Providence leading H.A. 21 to nothing. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. We'll be back for the second quarter in just a minute. All right, start of the second quarter here at Providence Christian High School. The Eagles taking on Houston Academy. A big first quarter for Providence. Had the ball four times, scored three times. Picked up a turnover on an interception on H.A.'s first uh, play of the game. And uh, lead it 21-0. H.A. with their fourth third down attempt of the first half. It is a third and two. They've gone to the I formation with... Uh, quarterback odd under center and they that's the most success that they've had so far in the game it is and you know here you bring up a third and two and a you know, big third and two for AJ if they're going to get back in this ball game if they're going to get some momentum and all they've got to pick this third down up so they just had a little time there to talk with the coaching staff think about what they're going to run so let's see what it is uh, of course it looks like we're not going to run it for a few seconds we have the uh, head ref over talking to coach Kenny Keith I'm not sure what that's about but So it does look like that uh, for the third play in this drive, H.A. is going to go back to the uh, under center in the I formation, and that is Jake Ogletree in the backfield. He's gotten eight yards so far in this series. So once again, Ott under center, third down and two. A little bit of movement there by H.A. Uh, they were going to run it to the right side, and uh, it's going to be a five-yard penalty. So that'll bring up third down and seven, and we'll see if that changes the play call. Yeah, I know Coach Riggs for HA has got to be very frustrated with that. You come out of the first quarter, you're trying to get some momentum going. You've got a third and short for the really the first or second time in the game for them, and you see your uh, offensive line jump there. Not what you want to see as, as, a, as a Raider at that time in the game. So H.A. sticking with the formation, two wide receivers, uh, 22 personnel, two uh, tight ends, two running backs. is going to be a throw. Oh, what a play. Hayes Lewis was able to 
knock that down. If he puts his head up just a little bit and looks over, he might be able to score on that play. Maybe so. Uh, Jackson Colley almost got a hand on the pass, and then I, I didn't see Hayes coming. He kind of came out of nowhere. Really nice closing speed by number 17 to knock that pass away. Great job of defense there by the Eagles. And fourth down for the Raiders. And that's one of those plays where Ott sees him open. Just a quick out there, and uh, Providence just able to close and make the play on that. Hold him on third down once again, and so Providence going to get the ball just six seconds in to the second quarter as H.A. punting on, the own, on their own end of the field. It's a low line drive. Should be returnable. Weatherford lets it hit once again. He's able to go up the field. He's got the 30, 40. He's got a little bit of a lane. Go back into the middle of the field, and it looks like he's going to score the touchdown, but there is a flag on the play which is most likely going to make it coming back. Yeah, you hate to see that. What a nice return there by Weatherford. And as you said on uh, some of the holding calls we've had on offense, I don't really know that that one mattered. But when you hold, you get called for it. It doesn't, you know, it's the penalty. So it's probably coming back. You hate to see that, though, on a play where it would have probably been a touchdown even without that hole. That wipes out. Uh, it looks like it's going to wipe out about a 72-yard return there. I don't know that we've seen the official call on it. Illegal block in the back, which, to be honest with you, I didn't see anybody blocked in the back if you want to call a hold or something like that. But uh, So a tough call against Providence is going to... They're going to do it from the spot of the foul, which was really unfortunate because that's about where he was able to turn back in the field and get, get home for the touchdown. But still good starting field position for Providence at the 36-yard line and uh, have really only stopped themselves so far. Scored on uh, three of their first four possessions. This is the fifth possession, and if they can knock the penalties out, uh, they'll probably be yeah. successful once again. Gus Goldsboro back in there at running back. He gets it. Another inside handoff to Hayes Lewis. He can't quite get through the uh, melee of players there, and it looks like it's going to be no gain for him. Yeah, the double handoff that time uh, to Hayes didn't work for us on that play, so that'll bring up second and ten. Haven't had many second and longs this game so far. So this will be the second time that Providence has faced second down and 10 uh, in the first quarter. Uh, Collins not able to connect with Abe on the out pattern there. So we'll see what the call is here. Got the bunch formation with Gus Goldsboro in the backfield along with... It's going to be a pitch out to Hayes. He sort of casually goes into the line for a one-yard gain, so that's going to bring up Providence's first... Uh, Third down and nine. Yeah, nothing happening there. Number 61 amongst uh, several other Raiders. That was Jacob Beaver on the tackle there. H.A. did a good job of stringing that out. Uh, Providence trying to get to the edge, and Hayes was not able to find a seam to cut it back up. This is one of those games where you get out to a quick 21-0 lead. You don't want to take your foot off the gas. Uh, Providence, the last time they had it, following a penalty, had third down and 17. Now they have third down and nine. And uh, the way this game has been going, they really need to pick this up. Collins looks like he's going to carry it. He's going to go down the field. Wide open as Jackson Collie makes a good move, a good oh, a stiff move. arm. That's going to be a touchdown, 63 yards. Collins McClintock to Jackson Collie. No flags on the field. And Providence facing third down and nine. Get another big play. Very nice uh, fake there. The great setup by Collins. you got to give him credit. He comes around, rolling around right in, tucks the ball, even lowers his head as if he's about to go and initiate contact. Pulls up. Collie was waiting all by himself. Uh, and again, as you said, a great move by Jackson. Jackson kind of uh, teased the defender there uh, and uh, set him up and then sped up and ran away from him. What a good job there by Jackson Colley to score that touchdown. And for those of you that are uh, young kids watching as you play football, a little stop and start, a little stutter move there sometimes can be very successful for you because the defender doesn't know what you're going to do. Jeter on for the extra point. It's a high snap, but he gets it down nicely and is able to kick it through. Providence getting a 28-0 lead now, two minutes into the second quarter. And uh, to go back over that pass, if you watch any Oklahoma football, now, of course, I'm an Oklahoma graduate, but if you watch any Oklahoma football, that's a staple 
of Oklahoma to look like their running quarterbacks are going to run it out to the right and then will pull up and throw that pass. Uh, Kyler Murray did it very good, and uh, Jalen Hurts has done it a couple of times now. And so it's a play that works if you can pull it off. Yeah, do you, do you mind sending Jalen Hurts back uh, for us uh, for a couple of weeks? Well, we can he, the best quarterback left. I think that's what we're seeing. No, no, two is so, still there. He, he's uh, just hurt. Yeah, I don't think so. We might want to <laughs> check those statistics and see. Uh, Big so, 12, Big 12. Yeah. That's no statistics to be compared. Great job there, by the way. Let's get back to this game yeah. real quick. There are three defenses uh, ranked ahead of Alabama's <laughs> defense, by the way, in the Big 12. Uh, but, great, great job by yes. Grant Weatherford of getting yes. that hold down on that kick on the high snap. Little little Oklahoma, Alabama going on here. Uh, well, that's, that's what makes it fun. But as we started the broadcast, what we talked about was – really for about the last four or five weeks not having big play ability and uh, Providence has shown it tonight and uh, it's got the crowd back into it, it's got the players back into it and uh, really a big part of what Providence does and you can go over some stats uh, of what it was like when Wise Gordon was here with the big plays to when he went out injured. Yeah, you know I was looking at that this afternoon before the game with Wise our offense was averaging 37 and a half points a game and going into this game without Wise only 16 so Objective evidence of the the big play not being there, as you referenced already. But you know, 28 points and what do we play? 14 minutes. Uh, not a bad start for the Eagles, of course, on offense. Yeah, and Gus Goldsboro uh, doing his best, uh, over 100 yards already uh, in 14 minutes of action. So a handoff inside to uh, Houston Academy, and uh, there is uh, no gain on the play. Yeah, Cole Smith, a couple of others on the play there for the defense quickly. Uh, going to be second and long for the Raiders who uh, just can't seem to get much going on offense right now. Austin Carpenter there on that run and uh, as we talked about sometimes here from the booth it's just a little hard to see those numbers so we're doing our best to try to get you who is running. So the play clock at 20 as uh, Houston Academy in the rare double huddle here coming up in the play clock under 15. They've gone back to the shotgun the last time out. They went with the exclusively under center of the eye formation. Ott's going to go back to pass. He's got two men on the right side. Going to go for it all and uh, just overthrew the receiver there by a good uh, three or four yards. Yeah, early, uh, early on pressure by 51 Grant Youngblood and then number 40 Michael Sullivan breaks through and absolutely hits Ott. But, uh, I don't know how I got up from that. That was a really hard, clean lick, but a really hard lick there by Michael Sullivan. Uh, uh, Odd Kid's obviously a tough kid to get up from that. Well, if you're an H.A. fan watching, he's been under pressure every time he's gone back to pass for the most part. Even the quick ones, he's been under pressure, and it's uh, very difficult with somebody in your face to try to pinpoint it, and so that was just a little overthrown. So third down and nine. Ott's going to keep it. He's going to be sacked in the backfield. And uh, Providence defensively continue to harass Ott. And uh, Houston Academy going to have to punt yeah. again. I mean, Grant Youngblood is having the game of his life here on senior night. That's You know, you love to see that, a senior playing this hard and having success. And he's in the backfield every play. Uh, they've given him the green light. I don't know if he's uh, uh, if, if he would just be playing the spot there every time he's just turning his ears back and going after him. So that's an 11-yard loss. And uh, Houston Academy now punting from the their end zone. Last time they punted, Grant Weatherford was able to take it back about 72 yards for a touchdown. They called a block in the back. He's standing at his own 50-yard line, so Providence going to get good field position either way. Sort of a line drive, a big hop once again. Weatherford takes it in his own territory, gets over to Houston Academy territory, and just wisely goes right into the middle. And uh, Providence going to start for the sixth time tonight at the 44-yard line of Houston Academy. Yeah, number three there, uh, that would be Tate Thornell. Put some pressure on the punter there. I almost got a hand on that punt. Um, good to see Tate getting in there, putting the pressure on. Well, you feel like he might be able to get one of those tonight as well. Sometimes when you see it so many times, you get the feeling that at some point he may be measuring it up. Providence leading 28 nothing, eight and a half minutes to go in the third, uh, second quarter. Gus Goldsboro once again in the backfield, but Weatherford's going to get it on the inside handoff. He makes a couple of moves, gets about seven yards on the play, and uh, if it's been the double handoff or that inside handoff, that's worked for a good five to seven yards each time. Yeah, nice positive play on first down there. I believe it was 65 for the Raiders. I don't have a, a name to go with that number, so I can't give him credit. 
Well, Thank we're you. sorry there if you're an HA fan that we don't know who that is. You can call in and let us know. So Gus Goldsboro going to get it straight up the middle, bounce it to the outside, and uh, had possibly the first down, but he bounced it outside, and uh, looks like he lost two yards. Yeah, 23, Max Bergreen with a nice tackle. Uh, good defensive play there by Bergreen, who's a good athlete for H.A. So that's going to bring up third down and five in H.A. territory. I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't four down territory for uh, Providence. Scoreboard says first and ten, but it is third and five. Goldsboro on the backfield with McClintock. Play clock under ten. Goldsboro goes in motion. Another inside handoff to Grant Weatherford. has got a lot of room out on the left side. And a good tackle there by H.A. to bring up a fourth down and one. That really was a nice play. I think that was 45 Drew Marshall for H.A. I kind of took my eyes off the play for a second because I thought Weatherford had the edge so easily. But uh, some nice speed shown there by number 45 Drew Marshall for H.A. on the tackle. Yeah, from our vantage point, it looked like if he could just get to the corner, he might have another long touchdown. But as it is, it is fourth down and one. Providence, as we expected, will go for it. Got a bunch set. McClintock takes the handoff, gives it to Goldsboro. He's got the first down and much more up through the center, and uh, he's going to take it down to about the 26-yard line. Very nice job by the O-line there, just open it up. I mean, no secret, fourth and short, where you going to go with it? But um, A.J. just couldn't stop the O-line there. Giving credit there, well, credit's due. Uh, Colby Pilcher, Jonathan Wells, Matthew Morris, Ian Smith, Her uh, Holland Harris doing a great job up front for the Eagles tonight, the big guys. And they don't get a lot of... Um, PT on the broadcast because you talk more about the skill guys, but it's nice for them to get a shout out because uh, Providence well over 200 yards in this first half. Got some motion from Grant Weatherford, going to give it inside to Goldsboro, makes a nice move to the inside, stutter steps, takes it back outside, give him a first down down to the 11-yard line. Yeah, the goals were there again, showing the patience, which I referenced a little earlier in the maturity as a runner. He didn't see anything to the left where the, the play was called. He stutter stepped and made a nice cut to the right. Made a great uh, gain, but it looks like we've got a flag down. So waiting here to see what the officials are calling. It looks like it is against Providence. Calling a holding on Providence. That's the second time they've been called for a hold tonight. And uh, turns a uh, big gain first down into a... I'm not sure where the yard marker is there. So it's going to be first and 19 for Providence at the 35-yard line. McClintock going to go up top once again. Oh. He's hit as he throws it, but he's able to get it to Michael Sullivan for a bit of a gain. And so a good move there by uh, Collins McClintock. That wasn't an easy pass. Uh, not at all. And he was hit really hard from the blind side by number 60, Alex Applefield for HA. Uh, really hard hit. And I tell you, it was good to see Collins get up for that. His head snapped back on that one. A good clean hit, but a hard hit by Applefield, who also was uh, helping Collins up after that. So uh, good sportsmanship, Sean, there. So give him about seven yards. That could have easily been an incompletion. So give some uh, credit to Michael Sullivan for coming up with that one. So now it is uh, second down and 11 for Providence. It's a give to uh, Gus Goldsboro. He has a little bit of a crease there. Looked like he had an opportunity for a little bit more. H.A. able to penetrate in, but give him about six yards on the play to bring up a really manageable third and five. Yeah, nice lead blocking there by number nine, Jackson Colley, especially our, our, uh, one of our fullbacks, number 32, uh, who's a senior, Tellus Nelson, getting uh, some block there, for, or getting a block there for Gus, leading the way. Gus coming out, and... Uh, We'll see who's if Christian Durden has come in for him. Yes, Christian Durden, who's a freshman, in for him. And it looks like that uh, Gus just getting a breather here. Third down and five. It's a little pitch out to Grant Weatherford. He's got blockers out in front of him. Makes a good move inside. 
makes a couple of guys miss and gets inside the 10 yard line to bring up goal to goal for Providence. Yeah, a little stretch play there using the uh, the wide side of the field, using Weatherford's speed, waiting for a little seam. He found it and was able to get the first down yardage. Nice that you mentioned Durden being there, the ninth grader there. He was the lead blocker on that play and uh, helped open that up. Good to see out of a freshman. And that's how you get more playing time too. Fundamental football. They ask you to block, you block. And the coaches see that. They see that on tape and they know that they can trust you in any situation. Going under four minutes to go in the second quarter. Providence leading 28 to nothing. Gus Goldsboro back in there. First and goal. Inside handoff to Weatherford once again. He's able to drag the pile down to about the five yard line and uh, bringing up second down and goal at the five. Yeah, that looked like number 60 again for H.A. on the stop. Alex Applefield, uh, I believe is who that was. Nice play by the Raiders trying to keep us out of the end zone. There's a lot of pride involved in these rivalry games, too. If they could make a goal line stand here, that would be a little bit of confidence for them and a little positivity for them. Second down and goal. Collins McClintock going to keep it himself, cuts inside at the five, maybe gets one yard there, and uh, going to bring up a third down and three. Yeah, Collins uh, hadn't run it a whole lot tonight, but hadn't had much success when he has so far. H.A. keying on him. He's obviously having a great year running the ball. I think he's got 656 yards rushing coming into the game tonight along with eight touchdowns, so they know he's a big weapon in our running game and keeping an eye on him. So I think he actually got no gain on that. So still waiting to get those four yards so he can get over 2,000 yards. So it's third and goal at the five. Goldsboro in the backfield along with Grant Weatherford and Grayson Stewart. Play clock and running down, uh, 14. McClintock wisely calls a timeout there before the penalty. Well, with two and a half minutes to go, 28 nothing. Providence will take the timeout with them as they're facing a third and goal from the five-yard line. You're watching the Scenic Sports Network. Okay, back here at Providence Christian High School. Two and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Third down and five for Providence at the five-yard line. The give inside to Goldsboro. He's got a host of blockers. Walks right in for the touchdown. And Providence increases the lead now 34-0. Yeah, again, the O-line just making that uh, easy on Gus. Um, you know, a great push, opening up the holes. Saw Jackson Colley, one of the tight ends. Saw 22, Reed Linder as well there uh, with some good blocking going on. And uh, Eagles going up 34-0 here with Jeter coming in for the extra point. So it's been a big night for Gus. Over 100 yards in the uh, first half. That's his third touchdown of the uh, first half. And uh, Providence getting a man on late for the uh, extra point to try to go up 35 nothing with still two and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. And looks like it's a good snap, good hold, and up and good. Jeter good once again, 35 nothing. Providence leading and uh, exactly what you want to do going into, uh, in essence, a bye week because they started before most of the other teams. So they'll be off next week before hosting the first playoff game. I certainly like that strategy by Coach Keith and the scheduling to give a week off before the playoffs because you get to this point in the season, everybody's banged up. There's not a player on that roster that plays any amount of minutes who's not hurt, who's not bruised, who's not limping. to some, something going on with them health-wise. So that, that week off is going to be huge heading into the playoffs. And I tell you, if I looked at the schedule right, that first-round opponent that we're going to be facing most likely is not going to be an easy one. They're, they're as hot as they can be right now. Uh, I believe it's Bayside. Um, I think we're who we're looking at. I'll have to look back at halftime and try to verify that. But uh, it's not going to be an easy first-round opponent for sure coming out of the um, Mobile area. Well, one thing that we know that Providence has shown this year is its ability in tight games, tough games, to be able to make the plays that's needed. Pike County really was a buzzsaw that night as the only loss. And uh, so this is a battle-tested team, a team that got to the uh, state semifinals last year. Jeter with the kick and just sort of pooches it down. H.A. lets it go down just inside the, uh, if he'd have done that three yards a little bit yeah. shorter, that yeah. might have been interesting. Yeah, that looked like a, a kind of a pitching wedge that Jeter threw in there. That, that ball stopped in a hurry, and the H.A. guy let it go. It hit a, just short of the goal line and barely went into the end zone. So, ooh, and he not only let it go, he ran away from it. <laughs> 
So 2.26 to go. Somehow a second has come off the clock on that uh, kickoff. Houston Academy coming out in the hole, 35-0. Under center for the second time tonight. It's just going to be a straight handoff and uh, give the running back there just about two yards. Yeah, that's Ogletree on the carry uh, for H.A. Looked like maybe Grayson Stewart, I believe, on the stop for the Eagles, number six. Uh, another senior who's having a not only a good night, but a great year at the linebacker spot. I think if you're Houston Academy, what you want to do is uh, – not have to punt once again and if nothing else hold the ball for the last two minutes of this first half but you got to get a first down and they've yet to get a first down on their own the only first down that they've gotten so far has been off a penalty Ott going to go back to pass once again he's going to go deep down the field it really is not a very good pass uh, that sort of got away from him a little bit yeah really and, uh, really late flag coming in there I'm kind of not surprised I look like it was pass interference to me even as an eagle uh, but uh, that, that did come in mighty late into the game and it's one of those that, that also, when he goes back and looks on the film, there's really no reason he needed to do that either because the ball was a mile in the air and it was really floating. And so uh, it was going to be a tough catch either yeah. way. It looked like maybe our defender lost his balance. I'm not real sure. That was a, the, the ball came out, as you said, and it kind of fluttered. And when, you know, when you've got a changeup, so to speak, coming out of a quarterback's hands like that, uh, that can throw off the defender. Looks like we've got two flags maybe, two different flags. but. But uh, both of them okay. saw the pass yeah, interference. Same call. So okay. 15 yards. So Houston Academy with their second first down of the uh, first half, both of them via the penalty. But it does get them up, up the about the 43-44 yard line with a minute 45 to go. So still plenty of time for them to try to get on the scoreboard. Under center, second time that we've seen this in the I formation. It's just going to be the straight pitch out. Moving back inside, good yardage, about nine yards there. And uh, that's a play, if you look at the plays that Houston Academy is running the first half, that's a play that's worked for them. It is. Uh, Ogletree on the carry there. Made a nice cut back into the inside to get some extra yardage. Uh, we had uh, Hayes Lewis and Grant Youngblood on the stop for the Eagles. So we're going to bring up second and short, which has got to be music to your ears if you're a Raiders fan to have a second and short. Absolutely. Second down and two. The uh, play made famous by Marcus Allen at USC. The old student body right. Back in the shotgun, Ott's going to go up top once again, going to go deep down the field. It's got a man open, and uh, ball is knocked away, and uh, the ball just up in the air for an eternity there. Jake Smith able to knock it away. Yeah, that was intended for their, their big play receiver, Brock Mitchell. He's only got five receptions on the year, but 205 yards coming into the game tonight. So when he does catch it, it's usually a big play, and obviously Ott going for it all right there with him. But that ball did hang in the air a long time. Yeah, it, if you want to look at a criticism there, that is that the ball is going really high and not as much on a line, which you'd like to see a little bit more uh, easier completion. So Ott under center in the I formation. It's going to be a straight draw. And Providence all over that one actually going to lose two yards and bring up an interesting fourth down here uh, from H.A.'s own 45-yard line. Yeah, two middle linebackers there for us. Number six, number 40, the two seniors making the play there, Grayson Stewart and, of course, Michael Sullivan in the backfield very quickly. So H.A.'s calling a timeout here to talk about it. Really, I think if you were uh, Houston Academy, I'm not sure I would have called that timeout and, uh, and just let the clock run and make Providence use the timeout. Because with 48 seconds and two timeouts, you could get something going. And with a guy like Jeter, you could still get a field goal. Uh, very well could happen. We'll, we'll, we'll see what the – obviously talking about it, going to go for it, I would assume here. Uh, I don't know that I agree with that. But then again, at this point, when you're down 35 nothing, why not in, in, in a sense? but Yeah, you got to make something happen. And, and um, they've not been able to make much happen. Uh, most of their passes have been longer passes down the field. And so this might, if nothing else, be a little bit of a moment for them to have an opportunity to um, – to try to uh, get a little bit of momentum for the second half. 
So fourth and three, going to be a straight handoff in the backfield once against Michael Sullivan, and Providence going to take over on first down at the uh, HA 43-yard line. Yeah, number 40, Michael Sullivan, the playmaker in the middle. Uh, great penetration. You're not going to fool that kid. He's a great athlete, but he's an even smarter kid. Uh, he, he studies film. He knows what's going on. He knows tendencies, and uh, obviously – Great play there by, by Sullivan, number 40. Yeah, I don't know that I would have called the timeout there with uh, 45 seconds to go to hand the ball off. And uh, that would have been a time for a little bit more of a pass play. It's what H.A. did. Down 35 nothing with 41 seconds to go. Providence with two timeouts. And we'll see what they're going to be able to do with this. Yeah, they're going to run the clock out. Classy move here by uh, Coach Kenny Keith up 35 nothing. Number 14, the Clinton Talk takes the snap. And so it's a kneel down in the victory formation. That's going to be do it for the first half where Providence was able to um, score on the first three times they had the ball to go up 35 nothing. And uh, we'll go into the second half as uh, Houston Academy is going to try to get something positive going for Providence. Uh, I would guess the starters may play the first. Um, series, and then you might see some of the backups start to get sprinkled. Yeah, in. yeah, one one series for sure, maybe two, uh, depending on what happens on those uh, the first possessions by each team. I would assume. And make sure all the seniors get a chance to play and get a chance to uh, make some plays. Well, that's the end of the first half with Providence leading 35 to nothing. Uh, Mike Bridges, Corey Driggers here. We're going to take the uh, halftime with them. We'll see you back here for the third quarter, watching the Scenic Sports Network. Major Anna Gray Stumas, is your band ready? Please take the field for halftime. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Headmaster Dr. Scott Phillips, principals Dr. Vince Jane, and Mr. Pat Seaton, we proudly present the 2019 Houston Academy Raider Band. Band captains Hayes Edwards and the bands under their field direction of drum major Anna Gray Stumas. Band sponsor, Mr. Cole Isabi. Major and sponsor, Ms. Jennifer Edwards. Associate Director of Bands, Mr. Joey Keener. Director of Bands, Mr. James Holmes. In celebration of Houston Academy's 50th year, we present our show, Rise Above, featuring trumpet soloist Hayes Edwards. We open with the 1977 hit, Birdland.
Majorettes and Raiderettes with Spirit in the Sky. David Edwards and our percussion section with the classic rock hit Freebird. Christian High School to start the second half of Providence and AJ 35 nothing Providence with the halftime lead John Jeter kicking off as AJ uh, deferred uh, for the second half kickoff and that goes into the end zone so AJ will start the second half first down and 10 at the 20 yard line yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of energy HA comes out with you know the coaches did everything they could and do did do at halftime to inspire them to come out and 
give 100% effort even though being down 35 to nothing. Very difficult spot to be as a player, very difficult spot to be as a coach. Really didn't have a lot of success in the first half. I had uh, Jake Ogletree at 25 yards rushing, uh, but uh, H.A. really not many yards in that first half. So it's going to be a uh, sweep, and it uh, looks like there was movement before the snap. And uh, H.A. starting the second half much like they did in the first half with uh, mistakes to start a drive. So instead of first and 10, it'll be now first and 15 at the 15-yard line. Not what you wanted as a Raider fan, as a Raider coach. Good gracious. Uh, no, you want to see some success. You want to see, let's put one play together, two plays together, three plays together, and just see if we can get a drive first and foremost before you even start to think about uh, what you can do here in the second half. But you need to have some success when they were in the I formation as when they had the most success. They're starting out here in the uh, second half with two wideouts to the left. Ott's going to pass it, but he does a little shovel pass. Uh, in the old days, he used to call that the Utah pass. That's a little shovel pass. And, uh, was read perfectly by Providence. Yeah, Austin uh, Carpenter, number 22 on the uh, reception there, but Michael Sullivan was not fooled one bit. Takes him down hard there for a big, uh, a big loss. Yeah, they uh, actually spotted him pretty decently on that, um, and it's a loss of three, but uh, it looked like it could have been even worse than that. And so uh, Providence now, or uh, HA now looking at second down and 13. It's got to be more than that. 18, yeah. 18. So Ott back under center. He's going to go up to pass again under some pressure and uh, had a man it looked like, but overthrew him there by about five yards. Yeah, Jake Smith on the coverage there. I think Ott pulled the trigger on that a little quicker. You know, he hasn't had a whole lot of time tonight. He actually had some time there uh, and, and got rid of the ball maybe a little sooner than his uh, receiver was expecting it. And he was just breaking away, so, but missed a guy there. So, Two or three times in the first half, we saw him really sky the ball on that was an instance where he put a little bit more air under that he might have had a chance at a big game. Yep. But as it is, it is third down and 18. And uh, again in the first half, H.A. only getting a couple of first downs, both of those via the penalty. So it's a tall task here at the 12-yard line. Ott going to pass it again, going to be a quick out. And that was um, red the whole time. And they're going to call it incomplete. The uh, wide receiver hit right as he tried to catch it. Yeah, that ball took a long time to get to the sideline. And as a receiver, that's a nightmare when that ball is floating like that. Because number eight, Abe Chancellor, as you said, read it the whole way, got ahead of steam up and timed it just right to really jar the receiver receiver as he tried to catch the ball incomplete pass nice job by number eight so providence starts the second half much like they did the first half holding ha to negative yardage fourth and 18 punting from the end zone for the second time tonight just a minute five off the clock and providence has no one back to receive the ball goes end over end takes a good ha bounce and going to be inside the 40 yard line they're going to mark it at about the 38 yard line that's where providence will start the first drive of the second half and uh, we're expecting to see the starters for this drive i think if they score on it might be the last time we see them tonight uh, very possible interesting strategy there too mike as you say as you said there was nobody back for providence i assume that's a uh, decreased risk of injury no penalty obviously if there's no return uh, a lot of times you see injuries on punt return, special teams, so maybe that's what that was. Well, we saw earlier in the first half Grant Weatherford with about a 72-yard uh, punt return where there was a call to block in the back. At times, that's where you can see the injuries, too. Guys can't fully see where they're at and can get hit. McClintock going to give the ball inside to uh, Gus Goldsboro, and he's met right at the line and uh, possibly going to be a couple of yards loss on that. Yeah, big time penetration there by number 50. That's uh, Chadwick Armstrong, one of the leading tacklers on the HA defense that really blew that play up. Uh, Gus had no time to get anything going, even to make a move because Armstrong was in the backfield so quickly. And that's the play of the night so far for HA, especially defensively, to be able to stop there. And that was a good looking play. And um, Gus had a big first half, 127 yards and uh, a couple of touchdowns there. And um, looks like Providence is going to have to call a timeout to start here in the second half. So yeah. uh, the first two plays have not gone uh, the way Providence would like to script it. Certainly not. Uh, this looks like there was some miscommunication there on the blocking scheme that was called. Coach Keith calls a timeout there to make sure he lets his offensive line know exactly how unhappy he is with uh, starting uh, the second half this way. 
with uh, with some mistakes there, obviously, on the offensive line. So maybe they can get that shored up and get back to playing Providence football here. Well, there's not a football coach alive that looks at a 35 nothing and is content, as you can see him no. down there, okay. and uh, talking to his offensive line. Hey, Corey, did you know that the big running event of the year is coming up? It's the Red Nose Run Holiday Half Marathon and 5K. Flowers Hospital is the sponsor. The annual fundraiser benefits the Southeast Alabama Community Foundation, provides $300,000 over the years for local charities. Go to rednoserun.itsyourrace.com if you'd like to register for that fun run. Second down and 12 following the Providence timeout. Collins McClintock gives inside to Gus Goldsboro, gets back uh, about three yards there. That's going to bring up third down and long. I don't think that's what Providence was really hoping for to start here in the second half. Certainly not. Again, good penetration there by the A.J. defensive line. Gus had nowhere to go. Uh, you know, you hope that's not a sign of things to come here in the second half, playing uninspired football. It's hard to keep your intensity up when you're up 35 to nothing, obviously, at halftime. But the Providence coaches, I guarantee you, are going to challenge them on that. So Providence coming out now with four wide receivers, three on the left, one on the right. And you're going to have single coverage on the top. And uh, Hayes Lewis had the first down, retreated, and then went back and got the first down up near the 50-yard line. And uh, the coaches next door had a little bit of a heart attack there. Yeah, Hayes uh, maybe not exactly aware of where he was when he caught that ball, which he had enough for the first down, as you said, retreated back. But fortunately for Hayes Lewis, was able to get that first down back uh, after the move that he made. So change to move and uh, lesson learned without uh, having to pay the price. I'm, uh, Hopefully, anyway. That's Hayes' third catch on the night. Uh, has 50 yards, and uh, Collins McClintock over 100 yards passing in this game. He's going to pass once again. Just going to be a short pass to Goldsboro. Give him about five, give him about seven yards, and he stays inbounds, gets close to the first down. I think they're going to give him the first down on a 13 yard there, and so back to back, uh, good pass plays for Providence. Yeah, it didn't look like there was much there as soon when uh, Gus took that um, reception, but he turned it into something nice. He used his speed to beat one of the HA defenders to the corner, number 45, Drew Marshall, on the play for HA on the tackle there. So uh, as luck would have it, they uh, put it right at the marker. So it's going to be second down and inches for Providence. They're going to give it inside to Goldsboro. He easily gets the first down and a couple of more yards and uh, give him about three on that carry. Yeah, did, just did enough to do uh, to move the change, which is what we were looking there uh, for there. Uh, again, two HA defenders in the backfield. They uh, may be changing up their scheme a little bit to try to get some pressure. It seems to be working so far here in the second half. I think what happened on that pass play is that he stepped out of bounds and then lunged forward. So it was a little hard for us to see from our vantage point up here. But Providence on the move at the HA 38-yard line, first and 10. Looked like there was movement uh, on the the uh, left side. Looked like Abe uh, took off running one count before the snap. Yeah, just a little early there, trying to get a step there. Number eight, Abe Chancellor, receiver lined up here to the near side. Which makes you think the pass maybe was coming to him, so he got excited about it. Maybe so, maybe so. And that's one thing that I think up 35 nothing that uh, coach doesn't want to see is penalties like this. Uh, they had cut down on the penalties in the first half, but they still had some killers. And that one right there, when you're driving, uh, trying to just use up clock, maybe the last possession for the starters, you certainly don't want to get a penalty. First and 15, McClintock with the pass that goes off the hands of Hayes Lewis. That's intercepted by Houston Academy, and that's a perfect example of what you talk about. You get a five-yard penalty, a little bit of lackadaisical out there, and A.J. comes up with the interception. They do. Maybe a little too much zip on that pass from Collins to Hayes. It got through his hands pretty quick. Hayes tried to reach up and uh, reel it in, went through his hands, and number 30, Jake Ogletree, who's uh, known for his running back skills, with a nice interception there for A.J. to make something positive happen for them. Yeah, and that's the last thing that Providence wants to do is to give H.A. any life. They scored 35 points in the first half. They certainly know that the opposition can score 35 on them in the, in the uh, second half. So after the first turnover by Providence, H.A. up uh, at the 39-yard line. It looks like we're going to have a, uh, I don't know if it's the illegal formation, I believe. The two wide receivers are on the line of scrimmage. Still no call. 
Here we go. Oh, they wiped it off. The flag. I thought that, that the one, two wide receivers were on the line of scrimmage, and I think one had to be off, but he could have easily he could have easily stepped back before the, the snap. The flag so, was thrown, yeah. yeah. So it's going to be a running play to start off, and uh, Jake Ogletree squirts through the line there to get 11 yards, and H.A. comes up with an interception and gets their best running play of the game so far. Yeah, that's the I believe their first first down on an actual play as opposed to a penalty that was uh, given to them by Providence. So nice push there by, by the H.A. offensive line, and uh, Providence, again, you got to have a gut check, a wake-up call here to pick up some intensity. Uh, at this point in the game. Yeah, because you want the shutout, and uh, the boys get pizza the next week if they get a shutout. So more than anything, they want that. But you just don't want to have any of the effort uh, not be there in the second half. In the shotgun, Ott's going to go up to pass. He looks over to his left side. He's going to go for a long pass. The ball flutters once again, and uh, that's uh, the old Offen offensive player becomes a defender on that one. That's right. Nice coverage there by Hayes Lewis. That ball hung in the air a long time again as well. He was able to adjust and was going to pick that off if not, as you said, for the H.A. defender, become, I mean, uh, receiver becoming a defender there. Nice job of Odd stepping up there. He was had some pressure, made a nice little sidestep to create enough time to get rid of that ball. So the ball resting just on the H.A. side of the 50-yard uh, line there, uh, 49 and a half. Brings up second down and 10 for H.A. They've got the ball following an interception. Ott in the shotgun once again. It's going to be a pass play. It's going to go down on the left side and uh, over the head of his receiver. And that's going to bring up a third down and 10. That uh, was intended for number 20. That is uh, Brock Mitchell, who again is the big play receiver, I believe, for H.A. Um, Hayes Lewis, I think, on the coverage there for the Eagles. Third and long now. So H.A. has yet to convert a third and long uh, without the help of the penalty. They did get the first down on the 11-yard run there, uh, but we'll see what they can do here. The play clock under 15 as uh, they hit the uh, line of scrimmage here. It'll be under 10. Ott's going to be in the shotgun. Going to have two wide receivers to the right, one in the slot. Ott's going to look a little bit to the left side, had a little bit of pressure going all the way down the field, has an opportunity to be intercepted by Hayes Lewis, and uh, he doesn't get it, but they do stop them here uh, momentarily. We'll see if they come in for the uh, punt. Yeah, good pressure again there by the uh, defensive line, getting in there, not giving Ott much time to set up, look down the field for long. He floated that one high again. I thought Hayes Lewis had that one. I think it should be noted that the punter was the first on the field this time, if you remember. Uh, in the first half, he was the last on the field, and they almost had to call a timeout. So, H.A. Uh, not able to capitalize on the interception. Providence able to hold. And so, H.A. with another punt. This a line, low line drive takes a couple of bounces, goes into the end zone, and uh, Providence will start first down and uh, 10 from the uh, 20, and we'll see if the starters come back out. I would think they would after that last drive, which was uh, not the best drive, uh, obviously, of the night. You want to see, again, uh, something positive happen here before you bring in your second team. So hopefully this drive they can get something going, put the points on, execute mainly, yeah. and hopefully then points come uh, from that. But you want to see them execute the plays as they're supposed to, whether that's the blocking scheme, whether that's not holding, whatever the case may be. But well, we see why Corey's calling the game and not next door with the coaches. The second team offense is in on on this play and uh, so we'll see what the second team offense can do. Jake Smith at quarterback, Christian Durden is the running back and Durden gets the call. He's got a lot of good athletic ability. You see it right there. He's able to cut back from the uh, left side to the right side. Can he outrun the defender? He is his first carry of the game. He's going to go 80 yards for a touchdown. Providence with another big play to push the score up to 41 to nothing. You know, hey, great run, 80 yards. What can you say? First carry, I'm sure, in the HA Providence rivalry for uh, for Christian Durden there, and he takes it 80 yards. Boy, what an unbelievable memory for that kid there. And it was interesting. I think he had about 79 yards after contact because it, it, it was uh, there was it was stuffed in the middle there. He bounces out after contact and takes it to the house. At about the 30 yard line, the uh, end zone must have looked like it was another 100 yards, but he was able to get in there, and we might want to uh, 
talk to our resident uh, expert here. Is there ever been a player, we think, that has ever his first carry gone for a touchdown or at least 80 yards? Yes. Yes, it, as if you could hear us having this conversation. But this could have been a history-making right there as the first carry of the game for Christian Durden goes 80 yards for the touchdown, first in this series as well. So a nice memory for him, as you said. Yeah, Durden's hitting the bar very high for himself early on, right? That's right. So he's averaging 80 yards per run now. But it is 42 0, uh, just about halfway through the third quarter, and uh, following a drive that sort of fizzled out to start the third quarter for uh, Providence. They were able to score there on that exciting play. And once again, we've got touchdowns of 61 yards, 73 yards, 80 yards, and 63 yards through the air. And uh, Providence able to uh, capitalize on uh, the big play, and uh, I think we're going to see the second team defense here. Yeah, I believe we will, Mike. I tell you, it was fun to see that. You know, I watched Durden dominate in, in uh, the JV level this year in the minutes that he played there. A uh, great running back. We saw him play a little earlier in some varsity action. Show, showed some flashes there, and, and man, wow, good future for that kid. And I think what you see in Christian Durden is a little bit of a skill set that's a little different than Wise Gordon and uh, Gus Goldsboro. He does have some shape to him, and he's got some athletic ability to him as well. He has the opportunity to have a really big career uh, here at Providence. That Jeter kick goes into the end zone, so uh, H.A. will start their third drive of the second half at the 20-yard line, first down and 10. Yeah, you're right. I see a lot of new numbers I haven't seen out there tonight so far on uh, on defense. Senior Eli Carey getting some playing time. Uh, looks like number 77 Jackson Dykes back in on defense. A couple of, couple of uh, 54 as well. That's Jonathan Wells. Plays a lot of offensive line for us. Second team defensive line, defensive ends in there. Uh, Jackson Colley is in there as well. So uh, the first play right up the gut, a little bit of a belly play, and there's that second team defensive line playing as well as the first team. Yeah, quick stop there, nice play there uh, by the Eagles. So give them two yards on the carry there, and uh, bring down a second down and eight. Yeah, that was Jackson Dyke, 77 on the stop for the Eagles. So Ott still in at quarterback for H.A. He's going to go under center once again. This has really been the formation that they've had the most success tonight, under center in the I formation. Going to be the old uh, student body left here. Got a big hole. First down for uh, H.A. And uh, give him about 13 yards on that carry. Number 10, Harrison Mims, who's another really good freshman player for the Eagles on the stop there. Got an H.A. player down, it looks like. Well, they're doing exactly what they tell you not to do, which is to yank him up off the field. But uh, it looks like he just has a little bit of a cramp there, and uh, that's uh, Jake Ogletree, but uh, had another good run there of about 12 yards in the first half. He had about 25 yards and almost has his total here in the second half on two runs. Yeah, Ogletree is senior for the, the Raiders. Good-looking ball player, good athlete. He's, he's certainly given everything he's got in this game so far. So first down and 10. Most of the starters still in for H.A. on uh, offense and a smattering of second team players in for Providence. Ott in the shotgun. We got motion and an inside handoff there to Carpenter and uh, give him just about four yards, five yards on that play and uh, H.A. starting to find a little bit of success here against the second team. Yeah. Nice pursuit there by the deep offense. Uh, John Jeter, number 16 on the tackle along with uh, another eagle. I couldn't tell who the other one was, but nice to see John out there getting some uh, playing time on defense. Yeah, known for his kicking skills, obviously, but it's fun for him to get a chance to uh, rack up some tackles. So another first down, second down and six. Ott's going to go up the pass. He does a play action and falling down just a little bit there. He uh, misses his receiver, and he was under a lot of pressure. Yeah, that was 22. Reed Linder uh, filling in a defensive end there, putting the pressure on the quarterback. Nice job. Also, again, number 10 flying around already, making his presence known on defense. It's Harrison Mims. The other freshmen, uh, Ian Durden, have been a dynamic duo throughout the JV season. It's good to see him getting some playing time on defense now. Going to be a great football player. 
So it's third down and five. And uh, not a lot of penetration by H.A. in this game into Providence territory. But they're at the 38-yard line, third down and five. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Looks like we have the double handoff once again. There is a little bit of a hole there. There's Mims once again. But uh, was able to throw him back, but uh, able to get the first down before he was able to make that tackle. Yeah, a really nice tackle. I tell you, that, uh, that was number 14, Abba, for H.A. on the carry. And uh, he had the momentum, it appeared, but Mims wrapped him up and brought him down very nicely. Mims is a strong kid showing that strength there on that tackle. It is another first down for H.A. And uh, we've seen every one of the Providence games and never seen the uh, double handoff. And we've seen it uh, about 10 times tonight so far. Four and a half to go here, 42-0 Providence. And uh, off on the snap count there, three quarters of the H.A. team. Looks like that's going to be a uh, false start and push them back to a first and 15. Yeah, there were players on both sides that moved, but the ball never did. So each, each time that H.A. has had a little bit of a, a drive going, they have hurt themselves with the penalties, getting them behind the chains. And uh, same thing here. It is a first down and 15, moving the ball back uh, from the 45 back to the 40. H.A. going with the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the left. Now you've got three on the left, and so Ott moves just a little bit. It's going to throw it back to the right. It's a good pass, but just missing him by about uh, three yards and just having tough time connecting with his receivers tonight. Uh, that was intended for the tight end, number 81, Don Williams, who is a phenomenal baseball player. Uh, and he had a step. He may have had him there, but it wasn't a bad throw. It just would have had to be a perfect throw because Jake Smith, who's also a phenomenal baseball player, uh, had good coverage on him there. Yeah, that's one where you're just going to have to try to drop it in there and, and just has not been able to do that tonight. So second down and 15. The scoreboard says 14, even though they uh, backed them up five yards. Ott in the shotgun once again and uh, does a play action. He's got some pressure in his face, goes down the field, and uh, once again missing his receiver by a couple of uh, yards. He took a hard hit here, and uh, with the score 42 nothing. You just don't know how how many hits you want your quarterback to take. No, I certainly agree with that. John Jeter with a good, clean, hard hit there, bringing the pressure, number 16. Again, I don't see many kickers lay licks like that, like John Jeter just did, but uh, nice nice pressure. Uh, but, again, Ott continues to take the hits and get up. Obviously a very tough kid. Great size. Just because you're big doesn't mean you're tough, but this kid's getting up every time, so he's a tough kid, obviously. 6'3", 190 pounds, and uh, when you look in the huddle, he's uh, one of the biggest players on the team. And he's hung in there tonight and uh, going to take this third and 15 under center in the I formation. Carpenter in motion. It's going to be the old student body left. And uh, couldn't tell if he might have been thinking about passing there or if he just tried to uh, outrun the coverage and not able to do that and thrown for a big loss. Nice uh, play by 54. That's Jonathan Wells, who's usually on the offensive side of the ball playing offensive line. You know, that's got to be freeing when you play offensive line to finally get on the defensive side and be turned loose to be, uh, be the one who's doing the chasing after all. So good so, job there. So give him a tackle for loss. He had a sack earlier this year on the road as well so uh, Jonathan uh, getting the most of his snaps when he gets the chance to play on defense and uh, so we got the freshman Mims back on the punt fourth and 15 and he's gonna have a chance to return it he catches this one in the air catches it with his hands back at the 25 trying to get the corner able to get the corner might have an opportunity here and was just hand tackled out of bounds at about the 43 yard line but an exciting return there by uh, Mims and as you said he's played well when he's had a chance on JV and he's showing what he's got for the varsity yeah a little deceptive speed there I think AJ thought they had him hemmed up in the corner and he turns it and uh, outruns him there uh, as you referenced on the catch there that was a really it was almost like it was a pass that tight spiral that came off the punter's uh, foot and then Mims just reaches up and snags it. He, he also is a very good baseball player. You see the hands on that kid right there. So setting up Providence nicely at the H.A. 43-yard line. As we've said, second team offense in there. Jake Smith at quarterback. Christian Durden, who had an 80-yard run on his first 
uh, carry in the series gets down to the 38, greatly diminishing his uh, yards per carry. It had to go down at some point, right, Mike? So uh, that's a 77 Tyler Lingo, big kid, big kid, good looking kid uh, for HA on the tackle there. He's an 11th grader. So give him four yards on the carry to make it second down and six, uh, pretty close to uh, five there. And uh, Providence just going to take their time here and just be very deliberate. Smith with the inside handoff and uh, close to a first down. I think it's going to bring up just about a third down and one there. That's Mason Baker, number 11, a senior. Uh, for the Eagles getting some uh, getting a carry there. Nice job by Baker on the run. And, and it's really nice to get a chance to see uh, all of the seniors getting in and uh, getting a carry, trying to get in on a tackle, things like that. And uh, they put in the hard work throughout their career, uh, no matter if they played one year or four years. And it's nice to see them uh, get something that they can talk about. Punch set here on third down and one. Durden going to bounce it to the outside. Got a big hole. Cut inside. Looked like if he'd have cut outside, he might have had an opportunity there. It is a first down. Give him uh, just about six yards on the play. Yeah, looks like we've got a couple of guys on both teams slow to get up. Uh, but uh, ended up making it. So, yeah, maybe nobody hurt there. That's a good thing. I see you, you, on that run with Durden's cut, you just see he's got a natural knack. I mean, some guys just have it. When they get the ball in their hands, they know how to pay, make people miss. And Durden set up the defender there. And if he wouldn't have slipped, he, he'd have been going maybe all the way on, on that play. But he had the defender beat with that little setup move that he did. Yeah, and I think when he sees it on tape, he's going to say, he, see that he should have set him up on the inside so he could have gone on the outside and used his speed there. Either way, it is a first down for Providence. On the 29-yard line, Jake Smith just going to hold this himself. Gets a nice stiff arm. Gets a good gain down uh, close to the 20-yard line. Uh, I think they're going to give him the 19-yard line there. And uh, that's going to be just about one yard short. Yeah, that was uh, Colton Ash, 54, uh, helping force Jake Smith out of bounds there just short of the, uh, the first down marker. And Jake is a lot like what you were talking about with Mims there, where he just sort of smoothly goes out to the side, and next thing you know, he's got seven, eight, nine, ten yards. Yeah, Jake, he has that same type of deceptive speed. It uh, kind of lulls you to sleep. So it's second down and one. Smith going to give it inside to Durden. He's going to go outside, tries to outrun, drop the ball, and it is recovered by H.A. at the 23-yard uh, line. So uh, a mistake by Durden. Tried to make a little bit more than what he had at that time and dropped the ball. Yeah, number 20, Brock Mitchell with the uh, recovery, I believe it was. I believe it was number 20. That's, uh, you know, you see a big play out of Durden last time. Then you see, you know, he's a, he's a freshman. He's going to make those type of mistakes, and hopefully he'll learn from that, grow from it, put that in the rearview mirror quickly. And it is a learning opportunity to get in there to feel comfortable with the ball and the moves and things like that. So we have more second and third team defenders in for uh, Providence. H.A. sticking with Ott at quarterback. Going to run it out to the left side. And a big hole gets close to a first down. And uh, we'll see where they mark it. But uh, they're getting some good uh, running plays against the second and third team defense. They just can't put them together. They are. That was uh, number three. Tate Thornell, who's a defensive back on that stop, and then you know as a, de as a defensive unit, you don't want your DBs making uh, stops on running plays. Uh, that was third level stuff there, so a good run for AJ. So we're under a minute to go in the third quarter. AJ has to snap the ball. Ott gives the ball on an inside handoff uh, for just about three yards there. And uh, as we go into the fourth quarter, Providence leading 42 to nothing. And this most likely the last play of the third quarter. Yeah, 33, uh, Jackson Cook, all that play uh, for the defense for the Eagles. Clock winding down, under five seconds to go. Really no reason to snap the ball. And uh, seeing something different out of the uh, student section down there, throwing up some talcum powder or some sort of uh, bomb, or maybe they uh, pulled a trick on somebody when they opened up their powder and uh, exploded like that, or the old LeBron James, how he used to do with the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
So we're going to take a break here, the end of the third quarter. Providence leading 42 to nothing. And we'll be back for the fourth quarter on the Scenic Sports Network. We Starting the fourth quarter here at Providence Christian High School, 42-0 Eagles in this one. And uh, a, it is a second down and five for HA. They're going to keep it on the ground. And a big hole here. And uh, Mims able to get the tackle, but into Providence territory at about the 48. A lot of running room there. HA uh, opening up some holes against our second team D here. We want to see these guys get that play in time and hopefully have some success here, make some adjustments and uh, close that up a little more. But nice job by Mims tracking the runner down for HA and bringing him down. So it is a first down and 10, and uh, by my calculation, I think this is only the second time that HA has been in Providence territory. First down and 10 at the 49. And I think we got movement once again. I'm just gonna call offsides. So offsides on Providence. That'll give a free five yards for uh, HA. And so instead of first and 10, it'll be first and five. Maybe the longest uh, mark off of five yards in uh, high school football history. First and five now for the Raiders. Uh, they've still got their starters in. They certainly want to break that goose egg on the board, I can tell you. They do, and the deepest penetration they got was just inside the 40-yard line in the first half. So uh, one of their best drives of the game so far. So it's going to be an inside handoff. It was a fumble, but uh, he was able to pick it back up and uh, make just a couple of yards. Yeah, you don't see a football bounce that nicely very often. He dropped that. It bounced straight back up to him. Uh, number 20, that is, uh, I believe, Brock Mitchell on the carry. So I think he got about one yard there, bringing up a uh, second down and four. It was a first and five after following the penalty, so second down and four. Still in the shotgun formation. It's going to go out to the right side and uh, Ogletree going in and uh, it looks like it's going to be right at the first down marker. Yeah, nice job uh, or nice push by the right side of the offensive line there for H.A. I couldn't tell who was on the stop for the Eagles. Michael Bridges, 55 in on the stop, and also Griffin Barfield, number 52. Yeah, so that's nice for a couple of guys getting a chance to uh, get themselves in the stat sheet. And when they look at the film, they always like to put the guys' names up on the wall, so it's always fun to get to see your name up on the wall. So first down and 10. H.A. driving, still with the first team offense in there. Ott going to go up on the pass, gets it to the outside for a wide open receiver, and he just simply dropped it. Yeah, intended for uh, William Wells, uh, who's a ninth grader, really good athlete, young kid, getting some playing time there. And he catches that ball nine times out of ten, I bet you. Maybe just a little nerves uh, for the young guy there, but he's going to be a good ball player for H.A. in years to come. Ott with a nice throw, good zip on that one, and right on target. Absolutely, and, and uh, Focus sometimes when you're young, too, when you're out there for the first time and thinking about getting it, getting hit, or making a move, or because uh, the defender wasn't real close to him. So second down and 10 from the 39-yard line. Ott's going to pass it once again to the left side. This time it is caught for a first down, give him about 12 yards on the play, and the uh, best penetration of the night for H.A. into Providence territory. Yeah, that was 23 Max Bergerine. He is their leading receiver on the year. He has good hands. Nice catch there by Bergerine. Turn it upfield for some positive yardage. I noticed we're giving a pretty big cushion on that side, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, uh, Keith, Coach Keith doesn't bring that defender up a little tighter. He's playing off seven or eight yards still, though. Let's see if they go back to the guy there. 
and it's going to uh, be a run right up the middle by uh, Ogletree and give him just about seven yards there. And uh, I think you're seeing a little bit of the inexperience, too, on the uh, second and third team defense there for Providence. Yeah, Ogletree playing his heart out. Kid uh, can barely get up at times. He's been limping several times this year or tonight, but continuing to get uh, the ball and run as hard as he can with it. And what they'd like to do more than anything is uh, break this shutout. And so Houston Academy not giving in at all. Going to go in the I formation under center. It's going to be the belly play for the fullback. He's going to go straight up the middle. He did fumble. They're calling him down, I believe, yeah. Yeah, it looked like he was down there to really, me. That was yeah, going to be a bang-bang really bang play. There's no review in high school, so if the play is called down, then he's down. So that sets up H.A. at about the... 14-yard line. Yeah, he was trying to get a little extra effort there, uh, extra yardage, and when he did, the ball came loose, but uh, as I said, he was down before that happened. Ott back in the um, I formation, and uh, big hit there. I believe that was 55, Michael Bridges with the hit, taking on the ball carrier, and uh, keeping him to just about a two-yard gain. Nice play there by Bridges. Met him at the line of scrimmage and brought him down quickly. It's going to be so it brings up second down and eight, and uh, on a drive that's taken most of the uh, fourth quarter, which I don't think either coach would really mind to keep that clock running. The game's well in hand, 42 nothing, Providence. Hot under center with the uh, pitch out to the left side. There's a big hole there by Ogletree. He tries to fight his way into the end zone. They're going to give him the touchdown there. 12 yards for Ogletree, and you have to hand it to him there as a uh, senior getting a chance to get a score in this rivalry game. Even though it's 42-7, he can still always say that he scored a touchdown his senior year. That's right. And again, a kid who I mentioned earlier has been continued to play hard, even though you can tell he's hurting and things obviously haven't going, been, been going his team's way. He's given 100% effort, and that's what you want to see. That's what high school sports is about. So trying the point after for the uh, first time today. Almost blocked, but it looks like it does go through. And uh, H.A. on the board. It's 42 to 7, which the uh, we didn't really talk about this, but the 42 points by Providence is the most uh, either team has ever scored in a uh, winning capacity in this game. So uh, Providence now has that record. Both teams had scored 41 at least once in this series. That's something these seniors can hang their hat on, something they'll be talking about for a long time, scoring 42 points in this game. is a really big deal, so good, good for our seniors tonight, and maybe these second-teamers can put up another score, too. So Providence will go to 7-5 and five in the uh, series, winning the last five uh, games, so they're 5-0 uh, and oh in the last five in this series and uh, going to go into the playoffs on a high note as well. And uh, H.A. has one more game to go. And they take on G.W. Long. We're getting a uh, word. Yeah, G.W. Long's the team. has had a really good year. Has bounced back after several down years and uh, doing doing really well this year. So that'll be another tough matchup next week for H.A. to close out the year. So this is one that we want to see if he's going to kick it deep. Uh, Christian Durden is deep for Providence, or are they going to try an onside kick? Down 42-7. to seven. You couldn't fault them for doing an onside kick. They're just going to kick it deep, and uh, Durden's going to be able to take it uh, at the five. He's going to have to pick that up. Thought it might go into the end zone, but he's got an opportunity for a big run back here and uh, was able to take it up to about the 27-yard line. And what we talked about in the first half where H.A. let the ball go and it just went in the end zone, Durden tried that same thing, and it uh, didn't work out. But for him, with his athletic ability, able to uh, take it back in and uh, get about 23 yards on that. Yeah, that ball checked up in a hurry. Durden turned around and realized what happened and grabbed it, and uh, that turned out a lot better than it could have. Fortunately, that's going to be another lesson learned for uh, Christian Durden. I'm sure that the coaches will talk with him about uh, this, this, coming, this coming week. And, Corey, you would take that check up on your uh, pitch from 100 yards in any day of the week. Certainly would, certainly would. A little backspin. Uh, all right, we got a third quarterback in, Harrison Mims for Providence. He does the inside handoff here and just about three yards on the carry. 
Yeah, that's number um, 11 again. Mason Baker, senior, getting another carry on the play. Good job to get some positive yardage there for Mason. So I'm not sure. It'd be interesting to think when the last time Providence has played three quarterbacks in a game. So um, it's good for Harrison Mims to get a chance to, on the last uh, regular season game, to come up from JV and get a chance to show what he can do. We've seen him defensively. We saw him on the punt return. We might have an all-purpose guy in the making here. Uh, he's a good athlete. He really is. Good kid, too. He takes a snap. He's just going to keep it and uh, try the side. And uh, that might be Jake Smith. I can't tell. The numbers look so similar. No, that was Mims still in there. And uh, give him about three yards on that. Yeah, Mims uh, didn't start out at quarterback for the JV team at the beginning of the year. They moved him to quarterback, I believe it was the third game of the year, and they didn't lose a game after he moved there. He had a really good, successful tenure quarterback for the JV team. So good to see him getting some action now. And Providence uh, unofficially getting close to the 500-yard mark. 6.25 to go. Not quite sure why the clock's not running. I'm not sure either. Uh, Mim's thinking it is, I guess. The play clock's running, but not the main clock. Yeah, so there's Durden uh, getting the first down. He's able to uh, put his head down and give him just about uh, five yards on that carry. And if they're able to give Durden a couple of more carries, he might go over 100 yards, and they'd have three rushers over 100 tonight. Yeah, and you would think coming into this game that one of those would have been Collins McClintock. I, I, it, but Collins did not have to run the ball a whole lot tonight. Uh, I don't know that he had more than... I have him down as two carries uh, for zero yards, and uh, he needed four yards to uh, break the 2,000-yard mark, so he might want to tell Coach next week that uh, he needs a carry for four yards in the playoff game. So the clock is running now, and they're just going to let the clock go, and uh, it's at 10, 10 seconds on the play clock and uh, try to shorten this game as much as they can. Durden once again had a hole there, able to keep his balance and get just about six yards. If he'd able to keep his head up, he might have had an opportunity at a 60-yard touchdown. Yeah, good hard run in there by Durden. And I tell you, this is a, probably a small thing, but, you know, this is working the clock and, and trying to run it out here. Getting Mims this, uh, this experience with just watching the clock and letting it run during the game. That's I mean, an important thing for a ninth grader to go ahead and learn and work on to do because in a big game next year, if he's playing quarterback, if, if Jake is not or something, you want him to have this experience um, if you're trying to run the clock out to win a game. Well, it takes a lot of patience. And uh, as a ninth grader up, you've got a lot of things going through your head right now. And the last thing you want to do is take a, uh, a penalty or something okay. like that. And uh, He's able to hold the ball, keep it, and uh, take it up uh, just about probably uh, three yards to bring up a third down and two. But it is not easy to keep that patient and just stay there and just let it let it sort of ride. I agree. You're, you're a ninth grader getting your first uh, major action in a big rivalry like this. Even when the lead is what it is, the nerves are still there. So that brings up a third down and two. I would think Providence might go for it if they don't get it here. Once again, just letting the clock run, just uh, under four and a half to play in the fourth quarter. Oh, The ball's on the ground. Uh, H.A. looked like they covered it for a second, and uh, they did. And that's exactly what we're talking about there. He's got a lot of things running through his mind, and the snap looked like it came back maybe a tick earlier than he expected. Yeah, not really sure who, who uh, was at fault on that. It really doesn't matter at this point. Hopefully they can learn from it, though. But number 11, Baker, was in motion. The ball deflects off him, goes to the ground, and H.A. quickly pounces on it. Um, so another positive play for H.A. here, get the ball in Providence territory to try to score again before this game's over. So a pretty good drive, though, there for Mims is getting his first action as a quarterback. And you have a freshman quarterback and a freshman running back. The future's bright for Providence on that end of it. So H.A. coming out the first time that they're starting in Providence territory. Ott still at quarterback. It's a uh, pitch out and uh, give him just a couple of yards on that play. Good to see 24, some penetration there. Jackson Tate getting some playing time here. 22 for H.A. Uh, slow to get up there. That's Austin Carpenter, uh, junior running back. 
he started the game at running back and uh, had uh, some, a lot of carries in the first half uh, as much as H.A. was able to run the ball in the first half. So he's played a full game. He's going to run off and uh, brings up a second down in nine. Ott, the starter at quarterback, still in, under center. He gives it on the inside, and uh, that's going to be a tackle for a loss by um, Providence, and so it's going to bring up a third down and 10. That's uh, Jackson Cook, number 33, uh, junior for the Eagles, getting some playing time here and uh, hung on for dear life to bring down the H.A. Um, uh, running back there. Nice play. So third down and 10, and you would think that uh, H.A. will uh, take two downs to try to get this. There's no reason to punt it at this point. Three minutes to go in the game, down 42-7 at the 43-yard line. Ott under center in the I formation. This is typically what they've done. Uh, student body left, student body right. Gets a little bit of uh, penetration there, but uh, give him just about four yards on the carry. Going to bring up a fourth down, but there is a flag on the play. Yeah, it looked like he was going to have a little more running room there, but the defense closed quickly. That was Mims uh, along with number 33, uh, Jackson Cook again on the stop. I think uh, Providence is thinking that it is on H.A. being explained what to do, and uh, Coach is saying to decline it. So that will bring down about a uh, fourth down and eight. And uh, H.A. obviously going to go for it at this point in the game. 2.43 in the clock running. Under center here with the offset running back. Going to go inside of the belly play, and a uh, player really ran into his own player there, and uh, he's going to hate that, that he uh, wasn't tackled by Providence, tackled by his own guy. Yeah, nice penetration there, 61 forward register, another freshman getting some playing time, was in the backfield uh, as that play blew up on H.A., and Providence, of course, taking over on downs now. The 2.15 left, and does H.A. have any timeouts? They've got, the, well, they've got all three left, but I don't know if they'll call any or not here. Yeah, not at this point. I don't think you do. And it looks like a lot of clean jerseys are coming on the field for H.A. as well. So getting an opportunity, uh, some of those kids, to uh, play. As we stated at the first of the uh, broadcast, it's the first, uh, really the only rivalry now in Dothan. And uh, it's going to be five straight wins for Providence to go 7-5 and five in the series. Yeah, not going to be another uh, win, but also another large margin of victory, which, frankly, I, I wasn't so sure about coming into this game tonight. I, you know, H.A., you know they play with a lot of pride. They're going to bring their effort. They're going to want to try to win this game and with a rivalry game. I know everybody says anything can happen. Well, usually the best team usually wins a rivalry game I, in spite of that saying. But I did think that uh, with our offense not playing as well as they have been, you know, the first half of the season, that you know, maybe that would give H.A. an open door, but obviously the offense came out and shut that door very quickly tonight uh, for the Eagles. Well, really the last two weeks struggling, needing a 41-yard field goal to beat Op, needing a fourth down stop to beat Strawn, both of those on the road, but uh, neither one of those teams really considered to be a powerhouse. And, uh, made especially Providence fans wonder what they had. This makes them feel a lot better heading into the uh, playoffs and getting that big playability back uh, really was a help tonight. Mim still in at quarterback. There was a high snap. He gave it over to Durden, who was able to uh, lose, it looks like, one yard. But at this point, the most important thing is that the clock is running and just about two minutes to go in this contest. And uh, Providence just happy to run the clock out. Yeah, a little uh, the, the bad snap threw the timing off on that. And the play was slow developing, so number 53, Jackson Bird for H.A., had a chance to get the penetration there and bring Durden down quickly. One of the worst things that we can talk about for the Durden family is he was right at 100 yards, and he's lost five yards, so he's back to 95. So if he could break off a little bit of a run here and uh, get 100 yards, his first 100-yard game, especially as a freshman, would be a really good accomplishment. But Mims is going to keep it, gets it up to about the 49-yard line, and uh, Providence is going to have to run at least one more play. That brings up a uh, third down and uh, 200 yard rushers tonight for Providence, Gus Goldsboro and Grant Weatherford, both over 100 yards. Collins McClintock over 100 yards passing. And uh, if uh, 
Christian Durden could gain five yards here. He'd have 100 yards, but he electrified the crowd in the second half with the only touchdown going 80 yards. Most likely the last snap of the game. Mims is just going to keep it, going to go around the side, takes a hit, uh, keeps fighting for yardage. He's not going to come up with enough yardage, but if they are lackadaisical in spotting the ball, that might be the last play. I think they were just in time. Good, good call on that. Absolutely. That would uh, bring up fourth down and one, but Providence does not have to snap the ball, and they're going to win this game 42-7, to having a bye week. And then they'll start the playoffs. They'll have a home game. But as you've pointed out, uh, when the region comes in here for that home game, it's not going to be an easy first contest. It's certainly not going to be a gimme. You know, you think you finish second in the region, maybe you'll get a pretty good draw. But I would say we got a very tough draw coming up with the way Bayside is playing football now. They're in a very, very tough region. Started out really slow, but it picked up now and uh, doing really well. But it is great. Let's, let's, uh, great to look ahead. But let's enjoy this for these 13 seniors from Providence uh, winning this rivalry game in such demanding uh, fashion or commanding fashion just taking over great job by the Eagles tonight and the seniors uh, did not lose to HA and that in their careers and that's something that is a pride factor for them as well a lot of second and third teamers got in we saw some of the freshman talent that uh, makes Providence fans excited for the future and uh, really uh, turned out to be probably as well as you could have hoped for coming into the game tonight. It was, yeah. And you see, uh, again, the sportsmanship here at the end of the game, tough uh, game for HA, obviously, but uh, friends, longtime friends, neighbors, like you said, people go to church together. Some have even been to uh, school together at HA or Providence before who we were shaking hands and embracing. Good sign of sportsmanship at the end of this game. So the final is 42-7 Providence. They end the regular season at 9-1. They're ranked 7th in 3A. Most likely will keep that ranking or maybe go just a tick higher, but they'll go into the playoffs ranked for the second year in a row. And uh, this will be the final broadcast for uh, Corey and I unless they uh, win a home game, and then uh, possibly we can uh, come back again. Maybe so. It's been fun. It has, sure has, Corey. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching us here on the Scenic Sports Network. We're going to sign off here. 42-7 Providence gets the win on the uh, last uh, uh, week for them of the regular season. HA has one more week. Enjoy the week off and uh, come back here in two weeks for the uh, playoffs here at Providence. So the end of the game here, 42-7 Providence with the win. You've been watching the Scenic Sports Network. You've been watching High School Football Game Night, presented by Scenic Cable Network and Productions. Join us again next time.